So I'm going to continue. I'm going to continue about the man Jackson. If you want to know more, I know you have that, but just to write write it down again. Okay. Jackson, if you want to know more about internal life, you should know who and what the man is. And over here, never says anything like according to Bible or you know the Bible said, Jesus said, never says so. Because you are dealing with non-Christian, non okay, Hindu or Muslim, so never said the Bible or never says, Jesus said, never says so. When if you said so, then they will they will close their mind. Don't show any sign that you are committed Christians. Okay? You are just, a, I am a Christian, but uh, I am not a Bible college or seminary graduate. I am not a pastor. Don't, don't say that. Don't tell him or show him that you are a professional gospel preacher. Then they will close their mind down. No. This man is a professional guy. <laughs> so my case is that when I present the gospel, even in, in an airplane, and this man will ask me, what are you doing? What is professional? I say, I'm a businessman. <laughs> I never said I am a pastor. And and he's comfortable with me because he's a businessman too. <laughs> I always say. Then I say, what kind of business? I say, I just to make my own. No. <laughs> and you know, then I'm a businessman, but uh, I am. I say, what what religion do you have? He said, I'm Hindu or whatever. You know, he said so. Uh, I'm a Christian. I just thought I'm a Christian. Are you Korean Christian? He said, you know, many guys outside the Koreans are Buddhist. They have their common understanding. You know, last time when I was in an airplane, and I just told him like this, I discovered, you know, Christianity is far better than Buddhist. Buddhism. Say, right? Really? But he's, he doesn't know much about Buddhism. You know? he, although he's a Buddhist guy, he doesn't know much about Buddhism. So I say, yeah, and so on and so on. And I just, later on, he said, he promised me he will, he will attend church. You know? Whenever, whenever you have a chance to talk to a person, he will turn out to change his mind. To Christian, to a Christian. So I give you how to, how to, okay? So you just follow me. And you will be, you will be greater than me. I say again, transition, transition, transition here. Now you have a first, first item is sinner, right? Yes. So I'm gonna tell you there. Ah, uh, Jackson. You know. Uh, Men, we call sinners. All men are sinners. Before God's eyes. Before God's eyes. Then this man say, God, yeah, he, if he's a Hindu guy, then he's a Hindu, he thinking of, he thinking of Hindu God. That's okay. You know, Buddhist guy is a Buddha. That's okay. Whatever he conceives, the, the gods, you know, that's okay at this moment here, okay? You know why? You know why God considers man a sinner? You know why God, Jackson, consider man a sinner? All men, without any exception. There is a reason. There is a reason behind that. I'll tell you what the reason is. <clears throat> I 
tell you what the reason is. <clears throat> you know, today's psychologist, <clears throat> you know, psychologist, okay, sometimes you just ask, you know, Jackson, you know, psychologist? You say, yeah, I know. You're asking. Okay? Today's psychologist said this. Every human, every human think, every human are thinking 20,000 times per day. And then you have to use your, your hands, your facial expressions, like that. 20,000 thoughts a day. So every thought coming and Go away, coming, go away, coming, go away. <laughs> like this, Jackson. Jackson, let, let your presentation be memorized. You know, and the stamped in his heart. So use your hand and expressions. You know, say 20,000. Like, look at me. 20,000. Look at my, my expression here. And you, you're looking at Jackson. Jackson, 20,000. Shock. <laughs> Like that. Why do I do this? Because I love the gospel. Huh? Who is what, who would be watching over me? Jesus. Our Jesus was watching over me. He said, That's the one I love you. Because you are witnessing me. Even in in an, in an airport. And even airplane. Next, next item is this. Jackson, however, I'm using transition here, however, Jackson, before God's standard, his, his standard, all the 20,000 thoughts are, are dirty, dirty thought, or unacceptable. Before God. So instead of unacceptable, say dirty. Then it's plain language, isn't it? It's a dirty thought before God's standard. So God would not like that kind of thought. For that reason, see using that transition, okay? For that reason, according to God, man is what? Sinner. For that reason, according to God, man is sinner. But furthermore, furthermore, suppose there is a very, very righteous man. Suppose there is a very, very righteous man. Good man without committing sin. Out of 20,000 thought. He would be, he would be God. But, uh, that righteous man say, only commit one sin, one sin out of 20,000 a day, he would be very, very religious man or righteous man. You see, one thought, one bad thought out of how many? 20,000. Very righteous and religious man. It's very difficult for us to find such a man. But we just assume there is a one man like that. We are assuming there is a one man who only commits how many sins a day? Only one sin out of how many? 20,000. Now, this righteous man, how many, Jackson, how many sins he would commit in a year? 
see, you have, you see you look at this table here, 1 times 360. So how many sins he would commit in a year? 360. 360 sins. What if he has committed the same amount of sins for 50 years? 50 years. Then times 50. That makes 18,000 sins. So this man, very, very righteous man, still is what? He is a sinner before God. Still he is a sinner before God. However, all these sins are going to be recorded in the recording book in heaven. It's not book of life. Okay? It's, 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 it's not in the book of record here. And Jackson, look at me. And you look at me. All Jacksons, look at me. See, when I present this, try to find something similar to recording book. Sometimes I, so I cannot find any any objects. I just take my business card out and say, this is a recording book. Business card. But now, see, we have a book here. You know, Jackson, whenever you commit a sin, dirty thought, that will be recorded like this. You have to. <laughs> Please. Don't. Okay. Where is the book located? On earth? Up, 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 up heaven. So you have to use your left hand. Bring it up. Visibly. You hold a book or any object in case you don't have any paper or your business card, whatever object, visible object that represent that would represent the recording book. Holding using left hand up. Holding the book. Like this. And you use your right hand finger, index finger, say, shh, you record it. It's record, record. Visual expression. And this man, boom, 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 like that. That memory can be, can sustain, can remain in his memory, in his heart. And Holy Spirit will 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 use you. Make sure that when you present the gospel, you are not alone. The Paracletus and Jesus is with you. So never be afraid. As you share gospel, then your position in heaven will will escalate. Your position will be higher and higher, which will please our God. Attending and graduating Bible college and seminary will not guarantee you. This book here, how many sins for the 50 years old man, righteous man, very righteous man? 18,000 sins are recorded in his book. So, Jackson, you ask Jackson, Jackson, this man here, 50 years old man, is he a righteous man or sinner? You ask Jackson. Let him, let him say about this man. And sometimes some foolish, you know, Hindu men say, but oh, he is a righteous man. I say. And then you have to confirm that. Mr. Jackson, this man has 18,000 sins here. Is he righteous? Oh, oh yeah, no, he's not, he's not. Let him confirm, convince himself that this man is not righteous man. He is a sinner. You have to carry him all the way to that position. 
and confirming through his mouth that he is sin. And that is recorded, they are recorded in the book of, book of recording, not book of life. Okay? Book of recording. Recording book. Now, I'm going to ask you practice again from this time from eternal life all the way to the recording book. Can you? Can you do it? Let me repeat again. Eternal life is what? And it is very expensive in order to understand more about eternal life. You should know what man is. And Jackson, man is what? Sinner. Jackson, you know why? According to what? Psychologist, man is thinking how many times? 20,000 times a day. So, according to God, all those 20,000 sins are dirty. Dirty. See that logic? Okay? Dirty. But we assume there is a one very nice guy. Nice man, righteous man, who only commit one sin a day out of how many? Twenty thousand. Then you ask Jackson, let him answer, okay? Then one a day, how many how many sins he would commit a year? You ask. Do you find out whether this man is following me or not? How can you check by asking him? Let him answer back. Don't you answer, said Jackson, and he cannot answer, you guide him. Guide him to, so let him, let him open his mouth and answer back to you. Then, if it's 50 years old man, 50 years old, how many? Say, 18,000. So let him figure out. Don't give him your answer. So here is a pen, would you figure out? See, as you watch over his figuring, you feel good. This man is ready to, he is really ready to listening my presentation. You know, so this man is righteous man. Even although he is righteous, he, 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 he has committed his sins for 50 years. How many? With 18,000 sins. You know, these sins are all Recording. So I can record it in heaven. Then say, like a computer, you know. Uh, How you say in Mongolian? Like that? So you use your cultural expressions. Okay? And now it's recorded. So this man is. He is a sinner, in spite of his, his great character, still he is a sinner. How many sins he has? Eighteen sins. So, your right hand is left here, right hand down, like this, but your left hand is up with the book. This is the position, right here. That's the end of the man. Okay? Now, transition. Next to God. So how would you say that? Jackson, if you want to know more about man, which I have discussed here, you should know more about, you should know about God. So you're not jumping into God's side. Let me repeat. Jackson, I have just discussed all this uh, God's nature on man here. If you know more about man, you should know who God is. And then you would say, yeah, tell me about God. The transition. 
Interesting? Interesting? I can see our brother Sam and Samuel is so interested. He's smiling, very enthusiastic. He's motivated to learn this. Now, God here. Now we know in the God section here. Then I say, Jackson, you know, God has two different characters. Jackson, God has two different characters. These two characters are very opposite. These two characters are very opposite each other. Sometimes very contradictory each other. No meaning? The contradictory? Let me tell you, Jackson, the first typical character of God is love. L-O-V-E, you see. Jackson, love. L-O-V-E. This love is, you know, in, in Greek language. You see? You know, you... It's called agafe, agafe love, you put down there. In Greek language, it's agafe love. This means, very simple, unconditional love. Whether you are good or bad, He loves you. That's the God's character, agafe love. You know why? Why his character is love toward you? You know why? Because he created you. He created you. Because you are his masterpiece. You know what meaning masterpiece? Okay. You are his God's Product, God's masterpiece. There's one example. You get one example. Example is this. You know, painters. You know, the painters who draw, who draw, who draw pictures. Okay, painting, oil painters, whatever painters. Painters would love to watch, read his his product in the exhibition. See, there is, see, there is one huge exhibition, painting exhibitions, with about 100 pictures around paintings. The painter will, will, will go to where? Stand before his picture all the time. Not, he wouldn't pay attention to others. You know why? Because that is his masterpiece, his product. That's a human nature. God's nature is the same. There are many examples. You know, many children in a class. You will only look at your own child in a crowd. Because your product is there. Like, likewise, likewise, that means that's a conjunction again. Okay? Likewise, God created us, so we are His product, so He always loves us. He always loves us. That's His character, first character. Loving means He will, He, he wants to forgive our sins. He wants to show mercy toward us. Forgiving God, mercy giving God, that's all related to love. That's one side of his character. Number two, the second side of his character, what we call righteousness. He is righteous God. Righteousness. Righteousness means, in a simple language, is a law. L-A-W. 
L A W law. If someone commits a sin, law, the law handles it and give a penalty according to the law. Any any wrongdoings should be handled by God and someone has to pay penalty for the wrongdoing. That is God's righteous character. Nothing comes in comes in free. Any wrongdoings should be handled by the righteous God by paying penalty. God has these two characters, love and righteousness. These two characters should stand together and these two characters should satisfy God at the same time. And then Jackson, look at look at this Jackson, look at this man here, righteous man. Then you just to raise your hand again, left hand again, see. This man. Now this is it. now I will I will explain you slowly. So you have to copy down every word that I'm going to address at this point here. Even my my presentations here. Okay. Left hand up with what? With this book. recording book here. Jackson. This righteous man. Now God's love. Look, look at me. Look, look at this me, and, look, and then you write down. You see. This Jackson. This this man, righteous man. This man is right in my left hand here. But this man, God created this man, so he loves him so much. But problem is that his righteousness. This man also carries what? This is dirty recording, dirty sins recorded in in the recording book here. So he carries that dirty sins along with him now here. See? So God in by the righteous God's character, he cannot, God cannot love this guy. Because of what? Because of these dirty, dirty things in him. See, this is pointing. So write down that part. He wants to love him. His hand here. His hand here. His hand. This is a, this is a, the man here. Okay? This is, now, he wants to love this man. But this man has what? Dirty. There is sins attached to him. So God cannot love him. God cannot love him. Who wants to love this man? Who wants to love this man? God wants to love this man. Okay, write that down again. God wants to love this man. Because of what? Because of his creation. Because? Because he's God's masterpiece. This man is. But this man has dirty things attached to him here. So God say God has in dilemma. God has in He is in dilemma. He has to love this man, but he cannot love this man. Because of his righteous, righteous character. He only, if he had only love character, then he could do that. But his righteous character cannot accept these dirty, dirty elements. That's a God's dilemma. You understand by now? Okay? Now, 
cut now. Now we are we just finished this third part here. God and love righteousness. Okay? Transition again. Okay? Transition from number three to number four. In order to transition here, in order to resolve his dilemma and to satisfy his love and righteousness at the same time. In order to in order to what? Resolve his dilemma and to satisfy his love and righteousness at the same time. God, in his own voluntarily, his, his, in his own volition, his own will, initiate an action in this dilemma. To resolve this dilemma here. Now, Jackson, I'll tell you how he did it. This is number, number four here. Are you with me? Yes. 2,000 years ago, Jackson, Jackson, 2,000 years ago, Father God, Father God had sent His Son, Jesus. 2,000 years ago, Father God had sent His Son, Jesus, to to satisfy God's righteousness. To satisfy God's righteousness by paying penalty. By paying penalty over all men on the cross. On the cross. Through his sacrificial death. Through his sacrificial death. And he took over the sins. 18,000 sins. He took over the 18,000 sins that the man committed. Now, just, that's a general concept here. Then I will give you the presentation here. Where is this recording book? Yeah. Like, like this, right? My right hand is down here. Now, you know, 2,000 years ago, uh, Jesus, who, who, who used to live in heaven, okay, he, he came down this world. So your, your right hand, is Jesus here, Jesus came down to this world. So he, he, the hand is lowering to our level here. He came down this world. He, he died on the cross to, to satisfy God's what? God's righteousness. So the God's righteousness what? Hates sin. Eh? To satisfy the God's righteousness, he died on the cross and he paid a penalty and look at me. And he 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 went to this man, he went to this the recording book location which is of heaven. He took over all the sins and bearing all these sins upon him. You see here? You have to have a kind of a Action and sound. Okay, this man's parent. Now, who holds this? Who bears the sins of this man? Ask you. Jackson? Say. Yeah, Jesus. Let him express. Okay? Jesus took cover. Okay? That's the critical moment here. Then Jackson, this man said, this man John, for you know, for example, this John here. Tell, tell me, is he a sinner now? You see? Jackson, is John, is he a sinner? Sometimes, 
No, he just, you know, was he, he aching down? It's gone! Jesus took over! Look at it, look at it. This is it. John, John is without sin. You see? Because of what? Because of Jesus. Jesus. He took over. So now, this man, in spite of his filthiness, in God's eyes, because of God took over, he is sinless, righteous man. That God will satisfy his love and righteousness at the same time. So he will accept you. Now this man, John, is a child of God. Got it? Would you write down again? Write down. Explain your own language, whatever. See? Now, <coughs> over here. And he will, right hand will go to left hand. And take this sin and away from John, holding all those sins upon Jesus. So our Jesus is a sin bearer. Sin bearer. You know sin bearer? Sin holder, Lamb of God, who died on behalf of sins of all humankind. You know, always the last minute is so important and crucial. After you all explain this, you got to have a good last minute. That would be the moment of his uh, changing mind toward Jesus. You should be clear in your mind as to how, how present the gospel at the moment, at the later part, which is the number five part. This part is so uh, important here. Okay? Now I'm gonna, we are at, we are at the end of uh, number four, Jesus part here. So I'm gonna give you a transition. Now what? Jesus, now Jesus takes over your sins. So you are no longer a sinner. That's the transition part here. You are no longer a sinner. Problem is, how, how can I, how can I believe it? Okay. How can I believe this? This is, Jesus died in, died 2,000 years ago. How can I believe Jesus died for me? Isn't it, isn't it a big issue? Huh? He, will, he will ask. Yes. Because 2,000 years ago, I was not there. Jackson would say. And John would say, I was not there. Is it John? No, John, right? Jackson? Yeah. Okay, yeah. After right, Jackson. Jackson would say, I was not there. How can I believe this? But now, you see, it's that's, a, that's the transition here. Now, Jackson, uh, that's number one here. Whether you accept it or not, see here, Jackson, whether you accept this, uh, this event, this is God's sacrificial death, okay, 2,000 years ago, whether you accept or, or you believe it or not, that had happened. That had happened 2,000 years ago. And last 2,000 years, billion, billion people, billion, billion people accepted the death of Jesus and became the children of God. 
including myself, and received the eternal life, which is free. You don't have to pay any money. It's free. I received the eternal life free. I didn't pay even one, one cent, one rupee. You just have give him your own, your own uh, testimony, just briefly. Okay? Some years ago, I used to be a Hindu or whatever, you know. I, I just, uh, now I received eternal life. So, it's not by emotion of acceptance. See, not by emotion. But it's, uh, it's a fact, a historical fact. Not by just a feeling or emotion. It's by belief. You have to believe it. Now, you see, that now this is important here. The belief is not based on scientific proof. It's not based on scientific proof. Belief is, is trusting. It's trusting. And I will give you some example. Number one. Number one. Jackson, you, you sit on your chair now. Chair. Sit, you sit on chair. You, you, have you scientifically discovered that this chair will hold you? Huh? You just ask. No. You just, you just trust and believe that this chair would hold me. So you just general acceptance that. Because everybody would sit on the chair. So you trust that this chair will not for not. So you just uh, unconsciously you just uh, sit down. That's the act you, that's the act of your trust. That's a simple act of trust. Example there. Try to give many examples as possible which I'm going to deliver you, okay? Number two example. You ride on a car, trusting that this car will not collapse or this car will take me to a destination. That's the trusting. If you don't have that trust then you will not be in a car or bus. It's a matter of just simple trust. You trust that the bus driver will not will not trample down to or down the alley, killing me. So we trust that he will safely take me to a certain place. That's a trust. Number three, trust. You, Jackson, you deposit your life, lifelong earning, deposit your life saving to where? To a bank. Trusting the bank will not take my money. Trusting that the bank will give you your principal money and interest later. If you don't trust the bank, then you cannot deposit your money there. It's a, a simple trust. Have you ever discovered scientifically or logically or legally whether that trust, that bank is trustable or not? You haven't done that. The next example is an airplane. You trust that the airplane will not fall down. And the next trust is a mother. Mother trusting. Mother example. Now, just write down that what I am going to explain to you about mother example here.
Jackson. Do you have your mother? No. I say, yes, I have my mother at home. How old is she? He say, 55. At home. Then, then I will ask Jackson, is she your mother? Is she your true mother? <coughs> And he would say, he would say what? Yes. 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 She is my real mother. Then I will answer back to you. Jackson, how do you know she is your real mother? How do you know that she is your real mother? And I will push him further, say, have you ever seen you coming out of your mother's mother's body? Have you ever seen yourself coming out of your mother's body? And he said, no. Everybody would say no, right? Yes. Then I would say, then how do you know that she is your real mother? Huh? How would you know that? You cannot prove yourself that you are true son of your mother. They say, well, my family said so. Or, I just believe that. You see, that's belief. Okay? Just a belief. Two thousand years ago, Jesus died on the cross on behalf of your sin, that's just a belief. It's just, just like you believe your mother, whom, from whom you, you were delivered, which you haven't experienced. You cannot witness that no one took picture of your deliverance, of your mother. So you, you go by faith in relationship to your mother. Hmm? By faith. You know, faith is always unstable. You can lose faith, for instance. Your relatives, Jackson, come and said, Jackson, you know, your mother is not your real mother. Many, many uncles and aunts and, you know, big brothers said, that lady is not your real mother. Then you are in trouble. He cannot prove that, yes, yes, she is my real mother. Because that, you know, his, his mother, you know, his relationship with his mother was based on what? Based on not scientific proof, based on belief. And someone said, no, 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 she is not. You know, the lady next door is your real mother. All these relatives was, if that's so. Then this man's, after one week, hearing this, this man's will, will be in shape. You know what would happen? This man buys food and gifts for for the next the next door woman. See? Someone people say that you're my mother, so mother, you take this, take this, and always visit the next door. And not caring his real mother at home. What if the mother's real mother's feeling would be? What what the real mother's feeling would be? Can she can she share her love to this boy? Still, eh? still love. She will love. Yes. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. No, no, no. Mother will. 
will have about 50% love. He will be, she will withdraw love toward that point. So it's, a, it's, it's a matter of jealousy. You know? So when you change your faith in belief, that, you know, when it, it cha in relation to God, although God, His love and righteousness, and He died for you, died for you, you say, yes, Jesus, thank you for that, thank you for that. Based on the faith. Okay? But, all of a sudden, your faith becomes shaky. Trusting other religions as well. Yeah, you died, but uh, other religion had the same sacrificial death like you. Like that. So like next door neighbor, woman is your mother too. And so on. You gotta have a firm belief in Jesus. Not by emotional belief. Just like firm belief in your real mother. When you change your belief in your real mother and searching for other ladies for your mothers, then your real mother will be in, in jeopardy. Many times she will be sad and she cannot dispense her affection toward his her real son. Let us explain all this to this gentleman Jackson. All these possibilities. And then say, Jackson, now you go back to number one all the time. Jackson, this is the final final conclusion for you. Jackson, now, I know you cannot exercise belief now. But just like, but simple, just trust. Express through your mouth that Jesus, you died for me, which I don't understand. But let me believe it. And then you say, this is a free gift. So why not? It's free. It will not cost you any. It's free. So just uh, take it. Mm. You just uh, let him take it. Some people, last time when I went to Manipur, you know, I, I, I shared this with the Manipur brothers, you know, there. And after we exercise all this, practice it, and there's one Hindu man who happens to be a relative of uh, Sister Devi, who, who is driving uh, uh, his own small car for us, who is a Hindi, Hindu man. So I, I, will, I will ask my people that, when I bring this man in front of us, one man will come forward and then share the gospel with him. See how he respond with me. So a Hindu man came over. And I just appointed one pastor, he just come over. Would you use all this formula and explain him the gospel? Which he did. And all these and all these, all these after that, this Hindu man accepted Jesus in public. Now, I'm going to stop right here. Is it hard? <clears throat> Let me just review very briefly. You just look at this table. You have to memorize all this table first. Number one is what? Eternal life. life. And then two ideas. Free gifts and expensive. And number two, man, sinner, and Recording more, like that. And next, God, Lord, and Christ. And Jesus, incarnation, takes off your sins. And faith, not by emotion, but to live your, I gave you all kinds of illustrations here. And here, Mother, example. Then he say, it's a free gift, accept it. Then I will show you more about this, but today, uh, 
And before we finish, I think we have to spend some time for practicing. Without practicing, they just take this note like this, then it's bad. Yeah. That's the, our, our witnesses, Christian witnesses. You know, Christian uh, business people outside. You know, they have many marketing schemes and strategies and know-hows of how to, how to motivate and how to persuade people to buy their product. And people, the company, train them like this way, seminar, holding a seminar and train them how to sell their product. They study and practice and study and practice day and night. And they go out and, and sell their product. Every, every people outside, in Korea and America and all the way in Japan, you go there and people, capitalistic society. You know, successful business people, they practice hard for, for, their, for their profit. See, after they sell hundred dollars, say, material, hundred book, whatever, and their, 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 their commission will be around five dollars or ten dollars. In order to earn five or ten dollars, they practice and practice and practice. But Christians here, selling the so precious gospel, as a result, you will be, you will be exalted, you will be escalated, and you will be glorified in heaven. Such a promise that you have from God, but still you don't want to do it. You see the college and seminary students, you only want to learn intellectually. In the beginning of this class, I asked you, how many of you, last two weeks' time, has taught the Bible or shared the Gospel? <coughs> only three, four guys, only raising it. What, what have you guys done? Hmm? Anyway, After you practice this, after you practice this, and you actually go out and share the gospel, then it will become yours. It will become yours. Then you will be able to teach others. Without, without practicing, you cannot teach. So I consider this evangelism is the most highly uh, considered and top priority subject in our curriculum.